Today's show is pre recorded. Like a million bucks, but the things in its cup. Mm-hmm. Y'all tell me who could it be for Steve Harvey? Oh, yeah. Everybody out there listening to me. Mm-hmm. Put your hands together for Steve Harvey. Put your hands together. Oh, 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 Uh-huh, I sure will. Good morning, everybody. You are listening to The Voice. Come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey. Got a radio show. I thank God for it every day. I try to remember that, too. You know, I try to remember to be grateful. I think gratitude is one of the things that helps keep me grounded. You can go as far as you want in life if you don't mind who gets the credit. Well, that applies to God, too, don't it? I mean, you know, really, if you don't mind who gets the credit, I'm surrounded by very competent people. I'm surrounded by a lot of people who work hard on their jobs, on their career, who are dedicated employees and and, and also just dedicated to their families and, you know, dedicated to their own set of aspirations. I don't expect anybody to work for me. Forever, I I always look at my job opportunities as stepping stones because I I want everyone around me really to aspire to be more. I mean, that's that's really the way I am. I'm I'm, I'm not any other way. I'm not trying to hold you to this position, uh, you know, tell you there's no room for growth, any of that. But even though I'm surrounded by these people, I'm grateful that God placed them in my path in my life, but in my mind, in my spirit, in everything in me, the credit still belongs to God. I'm sorry. The credit still belongs to God. See, if you would just for a moment stop thinking about yourself, just for a moment, I know that's hard, but just for a moment, stop thinking about yourself and realize that maybe you are who you are because God is who he is. Maybe that's the case. Have you ever considered that? That's the strongest possibility I can give to you. You know, how do you think you the one that made it through? How do you think you the one after all of the ignorant decisions we have made? And oh my goodness, let's all be honest. Ain't we made some crazy decisions? I'm talking about, man, I have made decisions so adverse to my destiny and career, my promises. I've made some decisions, man, knowingly, you hear me? Knowingly do something wrong. And in spite of all that, I'm still here standing. Okay, come on now. Really? Really? All the dirt you done done. Everybody done dirt. All the mistakes you've made. You're in the position you're in today. 
Because of what? Because you all that? Because you work harder than anybody else? Look, I work hard. I'll be the. I'll tell you in a minute. I work hard, but I don't think I'm the hardest working person out there. I'm pretty sure somebody done worked way harder than I have. So okay, so you work hard. Okay, cool. I got all that. But man, what about his grace and his mercy? What about his favor? How many times, man, you done relied on that even when you ain't know you was relying on it? How many times, man? God done shown you mercy. You ain't even deserve it. Do you know how many things I've done wrong? I just ain't get caught at it. <laughs> you know, um, let, let me see how simple I can be. here. You speed. You jaywalk. You lie to police when you get pulled over that you wasn't speeding. You go to court and argue you wasn't speeding when you was. You make U-turns. I'm just doing traffic violations. Now, let's get off traffic for a second. Let's get on human violations. You talk about people when you're not supposed to. You indulge yourself in gossip even when you don't really have all the facts. You pass judgment. You lust for people that don't belong to you. You say things to people that you're not supposed to say. So, look. All of us, we all, we all guilty now. See, I'm not saying you do all of that, but I'm saying I'm pretty sure I hit you somewhere in there, just somewhere in there. You didn't lie before, you know. You lied recently. I mean, come on. And I'm, I'm just saying. So with all that in mind, see, I'm just looking at the little things that we do that we don't get busted for, not to mention the chips you stole when you was a kid and nobody caught you. Well, that elevated, didn't it? And some of y'all just didn't stop stealing. And next thing you know, you was in a car. Now you're sitting somewhere you don't want to be sitting because of a decision you made. But through his grace and mercy, couldn't it have been worse, though? Without his grace and mercy, could not it have been worse? I know two dudes that got caught in the garage one time trying to break in somebody's house, and the person in the house they broke into just happened to have a gun and held them in the garage, caught them, and held them to the garage to the police came. That's grace and mercy right there because they had all full right to shoot these two people, but they didn't. They're grace and mercy. See, all of us have benefited from his grace and mercy. All of us have done a wrong, committed a sin, broken a law, and somehow through his grace and mercy got by doing drugs, buying drugs, slanging drugs, doing something, got by, jumped on somebody for no reason, got by, you know. So, see, how you figure with all that that can go on in your life. And then, hold on, let me throw a couple more at you. You can't wake yourself up in the morning, Mr. Big Shot. You don't have the ability to control the breaths that you take. Really, Mr. Big Shot. Really. Let's get real basic with it now. You can't wake yourself up in the morning. That's favor. That's grace. That's mercy. That's him allowing you to wake up, just hoping we get it right. You know, God spared me through all the dirt I was doing, just hoping one day, man, can you just straighten up a little bit? When I finally straightened up, and I'm going to just say it, straightened up a little bit. See, I ain't straightened up all the way. See, I ain't going to sit here and tell you that. I just straightened up a little bit. He started blessing me. So the more blessings I got, I started going, man, maybe I'll try straighten up a little bit more. So I straighten up a little bit more. And I still got a long way to go, but I'm straighter than I was. Now, when people judging me, and as they will, and they do, because that ain't right, but they do, and I ain't walking just the way they walk, then here come the criticism. I get it all the time. Stop wanting credit all the time and give out some credit where credit is due. Instead of get, having somebody patting you on your back all the time, why don't you tell God, tell people it was really it was God, man. That you don't really know how you made it. That really, man, you have no explanation for your success. Or you have no explanation why you still exist in the day. Why don't you tell somebody it was God today? Don't be ashamed. It's the truth, ain't it? I mean, really, man. Let's give God some credit here. Give God the credit and the glory and the honor. And like that plaque said, you can go as far as you want in life if you don't mind who gets the credit. All right. 
You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Steve Harvey Morning Show. It's uh, on and cracking. That's how we started to do. It, I called it the count off. You know, it was going to be like it was going to be a song, but in my heart it is a song. I just ain't feel like singing it to y'all today. No. I might change my mind. I might change my <laughs> mind and sing it out anyway. Yep, Woo, see, it just came hat. out. Came yeah. out just like that. That was a lounge hit. Mm-hmm. I might change my it. mind mm-hmm. and sing it anyway. Yeah. That was written by Roscoe Wallace in 1959. <laughs> Wait a minute. Yeah. Been Huge hit. <laughs> that Huge was a while hit. ago. Wow. Been out a minute, man. I was thinking about dusting off, turning it into a hit. This is the Steve Harvey Morning Show. A very, very grateful show. Show filled with gratitude and love. And we will be funny today, amongst other things. We will be uh, sharing some information and uh, we will be uh, ridiculing. Uh, one another from time to time in joke form, <laughs> yeah. and uh, we, we will be uh, looking at each other upside each other's heads by some of the responses we give. Uh, we thank the Lord for Zooming because it has kept us together as a unit, even though we are far apart in miles. We are here together to bring you the Steve Harvey Morning Show with Shirley Strawberry, whose uh, Zoom works whenever it want to. Uh, Carla Pharrell, uh, mm-hmm. the mouth of the South, uh, Mississippi Monica uh, Jr., uh, whose name is actually Kill Spates and the legend that he is, nephew Tommy. Uh, Jr., what's on your mind? Oh, big dog. Uh, let me ask you something. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, trust. Mm-hmm. Trust in people. You know, mm-hmm. you say you have to have a good team of people around you. How do you find out with the people that you don't like, you don't trust? How, is it hard to get rid of them? No. Hmm. No, it's hard to hold on to them mm-hmm. uh, because you sometimes as a good person, you want to give the person benefit of the doubt mm-hmm. and you want you don't want to come across as a person that's not understanding of a person that's lacking in some area of their life. So you try to be a little bit more accommodating and try to give them a little bit of chance to maybe self-correction, things like that. Right. But uh, bad people don't don't really make self-corrections. And it's not up to you to try to correct them. Just put that in God's hand. Uh, cut them loose and go on about your business. And try to remember this. Everybody come with you, can't go with you. Mm. And so, and some people are in your lives just for a season. And you got to realize that everybody ain't going to make the whole trip. Some people, that's why the bus make a bunch of stops. Everybody ain't going to your destination. Some people get on the bus, you enjoy their conversation, then they stop, come up, and they get off the bus. You say, thank you, man. And then sometimes a butthole get on the bus and be over there the whole time. And you be talking about, man, where they stop at? And you need to let them be able to get off the boat when it's get off the bus when it's time for them to get off the bus. You understand? That's the analogy I wanted to pay for you, though, Junior. Everybody yes. can't go with you. And every some people in your life just for a season. And when you realize that, you got to let them get off and go on where they going. Well, for thank, best, you. thank you. Thank okay. you. Yeah, let me tell you why. So uh, you find uh, three people fired, today. Somebody getting fired today. You heard them. Thank you. Hope you're listening this morning. Uh, <laughs> coming up in 32 minutes after the hour, <laughs> uh, we're going to start the show off with nephew Tommy's run that prank back <laughs> right after this. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is time now to start your morning off with run that prank back from the nephew. What you got, Neff? Uh, this right here is the new landlord. The new landlord. Uh, 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 new landlord. Everybody ready? Everybody good? Buckled up? Let me give it to you, cat dog, if you would. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach a um, um, Marcus. Yeah, to see who's this. Uh, my name is Jason. How you doing? My, right, what's happening? Listen, um, I'm trying to figure out if you guys are going to be out of the house by Sunday. Um, not the house. What the hell you mean, out of the house? Uh, well, let me let me get a clarification. Are you guys at um West Jennings? Yeah. Okay. Are, are you you guys have to start packing up or anything like that? Dude, who are you? Uh, okay. Are, are you? How the hell did you get my number? Uh, I got it from Mr. Vernon. Are you are you familiar with Mr. Vernon? Yeah, that's my landlord. Okay. Uh, Mr. Vernon hasn't um hasn't made contact with you, Marcus. No, I didn't talk to Mr. Vernon since I last gave him my payment. Wow. And who are you again? My name is Jason. 
I actually um, who are you, who are you to Mr. Well, I actually bought the property from Mr. Six weeks ago. Six weeks ago. Yeah, I actually oh, own. No. I actually own the house now. I, I'm, I'm. It was my assumption that you and Mr. had already hold talked. Up. No, hold. Because we. I, I made my last payment less than six weeks ago. And you own this house. I actually I'm own that house. I'm renting this from Mr. I'm sorry. I'm renting this from Mr. I gave him my payment less than six weeks ago. So you're saying he got my money and you own the house? And what's up with that? Well, yeah, I actually do. I guess you know he's. Um, he actually told me that. You guys would have been out by now, and like I said, I'm I'm gonna I'm looking for everybody to be out by Sunday. Are you guys gonna be able to get out of there by Sunday? Hold on. First of all, I still got two more years on my lease at this house. You tell me you want me out by Sunday? Well, Saturday if you could actually do it. Dude, come on. You want me out of here on Sunday? You well, some sir, damn mind. I actually have some tenants that are gonna be moving in on Monday. What I'm trying to do is actually get in there, and get you guys out, get the place cleaned up so the tenants can move in and actually start unpacking all their things. They're wanting to move in on Monday. Hey, listen here, man. Me and my family, we ain't moving no anywhere, all right? I don't know what the hell you got to do, who the hell you got to talk to, but you better go and fix that because I wish would come over here and try to tell me I got to get the hell up out this house. Okay, sir, I got you understand the fact I'm telling you I'm the, I'm the owner of this house now? I don't give a I gave my money to Mr. Vernon. You better call him, call somebody, take it to fix this shit. We ain't moving no place. Sir, I'm going to need move, you out. We ain't moving no shit. Where? Did you understand? You're I need you to. out by Sunday, sir. Now this is my house, and you're actually arguing with me about my. You ain't listening now. to me, man. You ain't listening to me. We ain't moving. I I still got two more years on my lease. Dude, my last payment, I paid that two months in advance, man. I okay, ain't moving sir, no here's, damn. Here's, 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 let me get you to understand. You mine. It, it, it was it was dude. Mr. Uh, responsibility dude, to let you know what. what? I own the home. Hey, come on, dog. You tripping? No, call me with this. About I would come bring bring your over here if you want to, all right, sir. Come I over will, here if you I want will be to. there on Sunday. Now, if you're not moving out, I'll have to move you. We, like I, I ain't moving nowhere. Sir, bring your over here if you want to. I'm though. not gonna sit and go back and forth with you. I want you out of my house by Sunday. I ain't moving. No, bring your monkey over here right now. We can start this right now. I need you out of my. Are you? I ain't moving no. Nowhere. Are you hear me? I ain't saying it no more. You're arguing with me about my property, sir. Are you listening? I'm paying for this. I'm paying on this right now. I ain't moving no where. You hear me? I we need my kids. We're going to sell right here for another two years so I can get them a better place. All right, you hear me? Sir, you hear I me? got tenants that will be pulling up. I don't give a Bring whoever you want to bring. I got something waiting on y'all. Come on in. I ain't received no notice. I ain't got no phone call from nobody else. I'm, I got, I'm listening to you talking to this Mr. If you call me, he the one who got my Money. Mr. Ain't Ain't kind of notice, picture no now. kind of phone call, no email, no text message, no what the Mr. Ain't Ain't out of the picture. I own like the I property said, now. Me and my family, we're going to be here for another two years. You hear me? You're not going to be there another two years. I'm going to get them into a better place. You're going to be out of there. I'm moving in my family. If I just there, dog, bring your over here if you want to. Are you listening to me? You're going to be out of there. What the hell you got to say? You got to take care of this. You got to take care of this. You got to You ain't moving me and my family out this. My house. Are you, are you are you listening to me, sir? What, 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 what you got to say? You saying something different now? I'm what? telling you, if you're not out by Sunday, then I'm coming to move your stuff out by Sunday. You ain't moving. Bring your over here if you want. I, I wish it would. Hey, you. Excuse me? You. I got something else I need to tell you. Are you listening? What the? What the? I, are you listening to me? What? Say something. I want to tell you this. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Malik, your son got what me to f- prank phone call you. Come on, man. <laughs> no, are you playing? <laughs> are you serious? Come on, dog. <laughs> y'all, see y'all on that other stuff, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna kick that little <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah. Y'all got me, dog. Oh man, I got you, man. You all right? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm all right, man. I'm gonna let my blood pressure calm down. He I'll told me, right. he told me y'all listen to the show on the way, uh, on the way to dropping the kids off at school in the morning. Every morning, dog. Oh man. Uh, all I know was uh, you weren't getting out that house come Sunday, was you? Dude, hell no. <laughs> we ain't moving nowhere. Oh man. Yeah, I'm already trying to save up, trying to get them a better spot. Hey man, keep pushing, brother. I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? You already know the Steve Harvey Morning Show. (laughs) (laughs) There is no comparison.
to the level of stupidity that I will bring to you in the morning time. There is no level of okay. comparison. We, I don't we think... have no one to compare it to. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then that lets you, you can stop the... using comparison. Well, I'm the greatest at this. That's all what? I want to put you out. You ain't there. never lied. Yeah. Ever lived. Go. Thank you. Get no argument Thank from you. us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there's talks. Yeah. There's talks about uh, giving me a star on the Walk of Fame just, you know, because of this stupidity. Haven't heard it's that. Me. You ain't heard about it. Oh, they're talking about <laughs> it everywhere, man. Yeah, everywhere. A lot of things, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, they talking man. about putting me right there on Hollywood and Highland, right over there, man. They talking about putting the wow. star, the greatest prankster with stupidity. Hollywood and Highland. Yeah, we're right somewhere there up in, the corner, in there. Right there. Mm. Uh-huh. Yeah. I didn't know. <laughs> uh, thank you. Fountain. Coming up next, <laughs> it is Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer, Steve Harvey in the building, ready for your love questions right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour in entertainment news, a lot of trending court news today. First, just a reminder to check out our favorite new TV show, Judge Steve, tonight at 8, 7 Central on ABC and Hulu. Uh Uh-huh. Plus, in other trending news, a potential juror told a judge one of the best excuses we've heard to get out of jury duty. And then more court news. There is a new host of The Divorce Court. We'll talk about these stories at the top of the hour. But right now, it is time for Ask the CLO, Chief Love Officer Steve Harvey. Bella in Ottawa says, I'm in my late 30s and I'm married to a man that is only good at sex and nothing else. He can't cook clean or iron his own clothes. If I send him to the grocery store, I have to send pictures of the items to him. We dated for two years before we got married, but I miss this. Is there a way to fix my husband? No, no. See, this is your fault, and this isn't about fixing your husband. You dated him for two years, and you say you missed this because you wasn't looking for nothing else. You was just having good sex, and you thought that's what you wanted to have the rest of your life. Well, guess what? It's more to life than good sex. So you can have somebody sexing you all you want, but the majority of the time you together, you won't be having sex. I hate to tell you that, but all these good sparkling moments going to get diminished by real life realizations. And the fact that he can't go to the stove, he can't iron, (laughs) did you ever cross your mind he was stupid? You got to send pictures to the stove by a 30-year-old. You done married this ignorant ass boy that can't do nothing but bring it. That's all he can do. You can't carry him nowhere. He can't talk. You got to pin notes on him like back in the 60s. You can't send his ass to the stove. He don't know how to get gas in the car. He ain't paid no bills. He's sitting there, your lights is off. He don't know what to do. Oh, but he can bring it, though. (laughs) But a loaf of bread, she's got to give him a picture of that. You got just what you wanted. (laughs) (laughs) Deal with it. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Bet bet you'll pick better next time because this ain't going to last. Uh-uh, uh-uh. All right, Catherine and Teaneck says, I'm a dog mom, and my boyfriend loves dogs, too. When we talk about marriage and having children, he says pets are a lot easier and less expensive. Even when we're serious, he says this. Uh, does this mean that he doesn't want children? What does it sound like to you? Mm-hmm. What, what does it sound like to you? Does this mean he don't want children? Why don't you ask him, do he yeah, want children? You, ask him? you know what? You're asking us for. Yeah. Why don't you say because you don't want to run the risk of losing him. Just say, listen, I really want a family. Are you against having children or are you for having a family? And start that conversation. And have a conversation before you get married. And don't get married and just try to pop up pregnant. That ain't going to work. No. Man, you you got a chance to talk about this. Don't write us. (laughs) <laughs> wow. That's your advice. <laughs> moving yeah, on to um, uh, moving on to Adrian and Pelham. Adrian says, my daughter is 28 and she won't move out of my house because she says it's not my house. When her dad and I divorced years ago, he was ordered to pay the mortgage. So he told her she can stay. Should I move out and let them have it? What? 
I don't understand that one. I don't really, I don't care what you do. I mean, should I move out and let them have it? You know, you got the house in the divorce. Your daughter won't leave. First of all, it, it really ain't your daughter's house. I can tell you that right now. In the divorce, I bet when y'all bought the house, I bet she didn't have a dollar to chip in on it. I bet her name was <laughs> never on the mortgage. And I bet she never did anything to become homeowner. So right. now, first of all, I don't know why you taking this from your daughter. Y'all be letting these kids have too many rent. Get your ass out. I tell you what, be here when I get off work, see what happens. But see, ain't no consequences. Y'all, y'all raise y'all kids like they your friends. You know, so now, so now she treating you like y'all friends because you done decided too late to parent. Mm. So, you know, you know, now you talking about should I move out and let them have it? If you want to, because mm. obviously you're not gonna confront your daughter who you scared of. Yeah. Mm. I ain't I ain't got nothing I made I'm scared of. Nothing. You can line all my boys up in a row and let and, and let the ass whoopings begin. Now they can whoop me now. <laughs> if all three of them that. jump on me right now, they can whoop me. But they know the first one that come in though is finna be uh-huh. two on one. Cause the first one in getting his ass knocked out. The first one in. <laughs> and I can tell you it ain't gonna be Winton, cause he know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it ain't gonna be Winton. He's not coming in first. Nothing I made. <laughs> I ain't scared a damn thing I made. Yeah, she go <laughs> live with question, daddy. Shirley. <laughs> mm-hmm. All right, uh, Rowena in Madison says, I've been married for 18 years to all of my husband's clothes. He's never liked shopping and definitely has never done online shopping. Yesterday, a package filled with boxer briefs and t shirts came for him. He said he decided to treat himself. Why is he buying new underwear all of a sudden? Hmm. I don't new know. Draws, new draws. You know, you ain't bought none. So maybe the man just wanted to try online shopping. And where better to try with just items that can't nobody see? He bought some drawers online. Why is he buying new drawers? Because he need them. He stop like reading. Angrier. Mm-hmm. You know, now if he buys some teddies and stuff online and it ain't your size, then now we got a problem. You know, box That's of good. condoms come in, we got a problem. <laughs> she thinks he's cheating, you know that. For some oh, yeah. new drawers? Because he, he bought some he new bought, drawers? Yeah, because he bought new underwear. Change your behavior. Who's he buying this new underwear, underwear for? for. Yeah. I buy all his clothes. You know, I buy all his stuff. That's well, when is she going to get him some new drawers? When is she going to get <laughs> Yeah. yeah. That's what I would really need to know. Because he going, damn, I'm taking these pants off. Okay, if he is cheating, let's let's just look at the logic. Let's say he okay. is cheating, okay? Mm-hmm. Let's just go from there. Mm-hmm. You ain't buying him no new drawers. He got to take his pants off with these old drawers on in front of people. Now, what you want him to do? The least you could do. Hey, in front of these right. people. These people passing judgment on him. All he hearing in the back of his mind is his mama saying, change your underwear in case you have to go to the hospital. <laughs> We've all heard it. We've all yeah, heard ma- it. Now, yeah, ma- maybe he's scared of going to the hospital with them ragged ass drawers on. Whatever. Now. But where do you where do you get that she's not buying him new underwear? Where do you get that? She said she's been married for 18 years. I buy all of If my you ain't clothes. bought this man no drawers in 18 years, don't you think it's time for him to get some new drawers? <laughs> <laughs> what do that have to do with cheating? You've been married 18 years and you have yet to buy the man some drawers. <laughs> that is My so God. <laughs> man, get the man some damn drawers. All right. All right. Thank you, CLO. Coming up at the top of the hour, we'll have some entertainment news for you <laughs> right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Please make sure you check out another hilarious episode of Judge Steve going down tonight at 8, 7 central on ABC and Hulu. Judge Steve Harvey's court is now in session. Steve? Yeah, it is. Yes. Still exciting. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Still yeah, having it's, fun? It's really, really a good show, man. Really, really is. I'm not kidding. It is. Not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well suited for what I do, right up into my strong suits and 
things of that nature. I mean, I'm grateful for it, man. It's fun to do. Every, every case is different. It sure you know, is. every every solve is different. Yes. You know, and, and and I do what most judges are not going to do. I get into the story. I really mm-hmm. want to know what happened. Mm-hmm. You know, don't nobody yeah. else care about what happened. It's the law. I don't even know the law, so you know. <laughs> Hard to I don't know, why, I don't, I don't that know part, what y'all that part. clearly don't know why y'all keep bringing this law up. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a judge. Yeah. yeah. Why does yeah. Keep coming up? Hard to apply. All right. Well, know. anyway, Judge yeah. Steve tonight, 8 7 Central on ABC and Hulu. In other trending court news, a potential juror woman identified only as Miss Bristol told the judge that she was too busy to serve on the jury on the sentencing trial of Parkland shooter Nicholas Cruz. Um, Take a listen. There's dates in July that you're not available. What are those dates? July 7th, July 4th, which is closed, and July 18th. But then again, I need to figure out something. I have my sugar daddy that I see every day. I'm sorry? My sugar daddy. Okay, I'm not exactly sure what you're talking about, but- Well, I'm married and I have my my sugar daddy. Okay. I see him every day. All right, ma'am, we'll come back to you, okay? Thank you. (laughs) (laughs) I'm not giving it up. You know, I I, I saw that on the line, yeah. Yes, so Judge Mm -hmm. Steve, what would you say? Yeah, Steve, come on, Judge Steve. Well, see, it threw the white lady judge off because she really didn't know. She said, I have a sugar daddy. And yeah. I see him every day. And so, excuse me? I mean, and, and, and white lady really shook her head like, excuse me? What? I have a sugar daddy. What does, I don't understand what that means. I'm married and I have a boyfriend I see every day. Oh, well, we're going to get back to you. She ain't know what to do. See me, I, I, see, I know right away. First of all, when you tell me you got a sugar daddy, mm-hmm. Judge Steve focus in and girls go, well, okay, that ain't none of our business. Oh. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you need Come to tell Judge Sugar Steve. or Daddy, whoever they are, the one person combined, that your ass gonna be in here on jury duty. <laughs> Adjust your okay. schedule. <laughs> Adjust your schedule, cause somebody won't be getting sugar this this month. <laughs> oh, well, she was dismissed okay. from jury duty, so no, nah, uh, hell no, nah, hell right no, nah, hell no. Nah. Is that uh, all you gotta do to get dismissed? No, nah, I'm mean? see your ass tomorrow. <laughs> yeah, somebody ain't getting sugar this week. White powder, sugar, yeah. dusted, or nothing. It's gonna be some naked ass donuts out here. Just get your ass in here, man. Yeah, this is a serious case too. Um, and and she got up there with that. But uh, yeah, this is a serious case. Um, the sentencing trial of Nicholas Cruz. Cruz pled guilty to the 2018 murder of 17 people from the Marjorie Stoneham oh Douglas God. High School. And uh, this jury pool will cons- to determine his prison sentence uh, or prison. if Nicholas Cruz deserves the death penalty. Yeah. Death penalty. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, kill all them kids, sure. man. You gotta be kidding Death penalty. Me, man. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, why sure. is we wasting our money with this mess, man? Mm, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. Well, everybody has a right to a trial. Um, why? He why? didn't have the trial. We know he did. We it. saw you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Should have killed him four <laughs> days after that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. All the time sitting around. Folks. Kill all them kids, man. We in here a trial, mm. defense attorney, and all this mess, spending taxpayer money. You shot them kids with this yeah. you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Evil. Definitely. Evil. Definitely. Definitely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can I about this yeah. mental illness everybody using now? We ain't doing that one here. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Hmm. Well, in other trending court news, Star Jones is the new host of Divorce Court. According to Variety Magazine, Star will take over in September. Back in 2020, Judge Lynn Toler left the show, uh, Divorce Court, and was replaced by Judge Faith Jenkins, and now Star Jones will replace Faith Jenkins. As we all know, Star was the co-host of The View and a former New York City prosecutor. And uh, so congratulations to Star Jones. And then finally, Blue Cheese, you are trending again. Steve, you know the picture of you rocking your Prada bucket hat, uh, boarding a private jet? that everybody saw you know the one well snoop has uh made it <laughs> made it a me <laughs> with the caption they say steve harvey about to drop some sugar honey iced tea with little baby <laughs> 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 
<laughs> you, you're about to go in the studio, you rap it. Yeah. <laughs> Make some oh. music, baby. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know what that means. You look, like a, you, you look like a rapper, dog. You, you look, look like a rapper. rapper. You fly. Uh-huh. Blue cheese. Mm. I love that gear. He don't know. He don't know how to accept it or nothing. He just yeah, no, uh-huh. he <laughs> really he don't. No idea what you're Matter talking. of fact, let me go see what y'all are talking about. <laughs> why do they call you? Well, in the meantime, why because do they call you? Because listen to me. Wait, but say, hold on, hold on. First of all, let, let me let me be clear about stuff y'all see about me posted. Mm-hmm. I I don't I. I don't. I don't really know how to do this. To be honest with you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So people. Oh, okay. That picture. Where was that? At? Oh, you saw that one. You saw the that's picture. That's when. That's when you know you are everywhere, right there. You better be rich. He said, you, "Where was that at?" You better be famous. <laughs> <laughs> where was that, that was at? like six posts ago. <laughs> when did he put the? <laughs> I don't even need it. Dog. <laughs> dog. I, dog. <laughs> Where, but again, where, why did where they, they call get you that? Blue cheese? I'm trip. Where they get it from? <laughs> <laughs> first, All right, look, uh, uh, we'll be back with more <laughs> of the Steve Harvey Morning Show at 20 minutes after the hour. Right after this, you're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve Ti is trending for being booed during his comedy set at the Barclays Center, and uh, he went live with Michael Blackson saying that he liked being booed. Take a listen. I loved it. I didn't feel like they were booing me. I felt like they were booing me as like, I dare you to be more funny. I dare you to, I dare you to overcome this. I dare you to do better. And I feel like that's what they challenged me to do when I did it. I loved it. Okay. Mm. Oh, all right. <laughs> no, no, you don't. Comedians on part. this show. <laughs> no, yeah. no, you what don't. Do you guys think? Very different from what they told me. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Who the hell love the being booed? Yeah. <laughs> and then I didn't feel like they was booing me. Who who, who you think they was booing? <laughs> I think they was challenging me to do better. That's what the booing is for. We done bought our tickets. You said you was funny. Now we waiting on it. It's just that he's, he's learning this very, very difficult craft in large arenas because he has a name going in, so he's on shows that's that that's got sellout capacity written all over it for whatever the reason whether he's with other bigger name comedians well all of them got a bigger name than him in comedy but he's got a huge name as a star in yeah. hip hop but yeah. that serves you nothing maybe maybe you should rap and then maybe try to drop a joke in between a couple songs I, i'm I just trying know. to i know yeah, they booed me they something told me telling me to, let's just stop let's just yeah. I'm, What'd you say, Junior? I know when they booed me, they told me, get your ass off state. <laughs> it, it came with comments. Yeah. It came oh. with comments. I was booing, heckling. Who the everything. hell is this? I, was, I, 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 I saw the tape. You learn this craft in the grunt rooms. You got to get up in front of them audiences, man. And your first 15 tries can't be at the bar clay. Sorry. Because you're going to come out Why? there, man. Because here's the problem. In order to be successful, you're going to have to learn how to produce house laughs. House laughs is when 85% of the room is laughing at a particular joke. That's how you earn a living. If you're not mm-hmm. producing an occasional house laugh, you can't stay on this stage. Now, you're in the room. Let's say you're at the Barclays, and the Barclays is 5,000 people. You done told a joke that 1,000 people laugh at. Man, do you know how many people that is ain't laughing? So now, homie, you got a problem because you're trying to dig yourself out of a hole in front of these 4,000 who are starting to get the feeling that you ain't funny. Mm. And what was less was I saw the joke he told about going into this uh, high-end gas station and how women need to use the bathroom. I saw that joke, and that joke didn't get 500 people laughing. Like I said, this ain't the craft you can learn on the fly in front of big houses. All right, well, moving on. Coming up uh, at 34 minutes after the hour, we're going to check Steve's voicemail right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, it's time to check Steve's voicemail. If you want to leave a voice message for Steve, call him at 877-29-STEVE, 877-29-STEVE. And Steve, you ready for your messages? Yep. Here we go. Uh, This one's from Portia. She has a message for the dating community. Okay. 
Hi, Steve Harvey. Uh, my name is Portia Ship, and I am trying to push people to stop having sex before marriage. And I just want to get my message out um, just to encourage people to stop having sex before marriage, just start dating without the sex, just get to know each other. And that's my message, and I would like to put it on the radio if I can. So um, with your help, I would appreciate it. Thank you. Bye. What? Oh, oh, what? Portia, I pre- appreciate Portia. you calling it's in. and uh, I'll definitely let you c- uh, come on the show if you contact it. I want to hear it. Um, I want to say good luck to you. All I was trying to do was just to get them to not have sex for 90 days. I tried that. <laughs> Yeah, so you say good luck. You must have so a ninety day rule. I just I at least came up with a probation period of ninety days. That was a hard selling that. Right. I, you got know, pushed back on that. I got I got fault. <laughs> Act of Congress trying to get the ninety and days women. passed. Mm-hmm. And so good luck to you, Portia. I know you want to push it and all this here. Just wait. That's good. Yeah. Next question, sure. No, that, that campaign is not going to All right, work. this is from... Uh, ahead. <laughs> this is you, you can put that right up there with the no cussing thing they tried to do. <laughs> Go ahead, this sure. message is from uh, Gerald from Texas. Hello, Mr. Steve. This is Gerald from Texas. Man, I listen to you every morning. Your messages, you have a lot of positive messages, man, and a lot of them have touched me. But this one this morning, planting the seed. And not expecting anything from it, just waiting to see what it grow from it. Man, that's a strong message. Because, like you say, looking for something in return immediately, you don't know what God might have in store for you. I love that message, man. Keep on doing what you're doing. Everybody at the show, I love what y'all do, man. God bless y'all. Have a good day. All right, Joe. Right. I appreciate that. That's yeah. a true statement. I like nice. that one, too. I look yeah. at my life, and I look at how many seeds I planted years ago. Mm-hmm. That I just, you know, tend to every now and then by watering, mm-hmm. fertilizing, remaining positive, prayerful, you know, in hopes mm-hmm. of, you know, doing the goodwill and all like that. And I can't tell you how much stuff is coming up to gr- out the ground later on from it. Mm-hmm. It's just what mm-hmm. you got to be willing to plant the seeds and do the right things and, and move on. And just tend to it. And the way you tend to seeds you planted is stay positive, you know, make contact, you know, check in on people every now and then, email Mm-hmm. Call him. Hey, just checking with your man. We still good. All right. We'll never know. I like okay. Next, Shirley. All right. Let's go to Corey. Oh, Corey. Hey, Steve. This is Corey. Just want to let you know, I used to not listen to your inspirational messages uh, in the morning. I used to skip right past them because I listened to them on the podcast. But this past week, for whatever reason, man, I started listening to them. And I've been going through a lot of things, man. Heartbreak, homelessness. Yeah, and a bunch of other things, man. Uh, divorce. So I started listening to these messages for whatever reason this week, man. And everything you said, I just made a positive effect on me, man. And now every day I wake up and I'm happy because I got a chance to do things right today. Every morning that God gives me. So I want to thank you, man. And I'm going to continue to listen to your inspirational messages in the morning as long as you continue to say them. Thank you, Steve. Mm. Well, wow. uh, Gerald, I'm gonna tell you that with all yes, you have to give no, all that, that Corey. Corey, 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 you have to give all that credit. I have to give all that credit to God. Uh, that's not me. That's just me allowing Him to use me. Uh, I'm a good person, but I, you know, not to that degree. I, I, I try to live a good life, but I'm, I'm flawed myself, man. And when you say you was heartbroken, homeless, and divorced. Uh, been there, done that, and uh, God delivered me. So God is in the delivery business. Believe that. Thank you, man. All right. Mm. All right. Call, leave, leave Steve a message at 877-29-STEVE. Coming up next, the nephew is here with today's prank phone call right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, it's my strawberry letter for today, and the subject is, what's the rush? We'll get into that in a bit, but right now it is time for the nephew with today's prank phone call. What you got for us, Neff? Uh, I think we're going to turn somebody's lights off today, Shirley. That's what we're going to do. Today is about to turn your lights off. 
about to turn your lights off. Let's go, cat dog. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to find Gerard, please. Get us now. Hey, Gerard, how you doing? This is um, Mason, man. I'm, I'm, I'm the guy that turns the lights on and off if you haven't paid your bill. And I'm okay. over here at your house. I'm, I'm actually getting ready to turn the, the lights off, but I'm trying to... Uh, it's a courtesy call we're supposed to give. If people can pay their bill before we turn them off, then we collect and we keep moving. You say, you say who, who, you, who are you again? I'm Mason. Exactly, sir. And you say you're about to do what? I'm, I'm getting ready to turn the lights off because the bill hasn't been paid. I'm getting ready to turn the power off. Are, are, are you here at the house? No, I'm at work. Okay. Well, listen, is there anyone at the house that can make a payment? Make a payment? The payment right now that I have is $221.36. Is that right? For what? The electric? For the electric bill. Yes, sir. No, no, sir. No, sir. No, no. There's nobody at the house, and I don't think I owe that much. Well, that's what I have right now, $221.36. No, see, see, my wife, she already paid that, see. Okay, well, I, they don't have a record of that. I, I'm in your driveway right now. I'm getting ready to turn this thing off but, until a payment has been made. Well, see, there's, there's nobody home right now. Okay, well, if no one is here, then I have to follow through and continue and, and go ahead and... and, and, and Turn the power off until everything is rectified. Oh, 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 oh. you in my driveway? I'm in your driveway. Sir, is there anyone here? Or how far are you from here? I'm at work. I can't get off right now, but you got to get out my driveway. No, no, sir. I'm not going to be able to leave your driveway until I actually turn the power off. Can't turn my power off. I got food in the refrigerator. My kids got fish that, you know, come on, man. Well, what do, you, what do you mean you got fish? What does that mean? I can be there in 30 minutes to give you the cash right now. Sir, what, 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 what do you mean when you say you got fish? Fish, fish tank. Oh, a fish tank. You have a fish tank? Okay, well, sir, I I, I, I understand that, but... Uh, sir, listen, I'll be there in 30 minutes. You stay right there. Don't touch nothing, okay? So I can't I can't be here 30 minutes. I can't wait that long. 30 minutes, I'll be there with cash, and I'll pay you, what, is it 200? What? what is it? We, don't, we don't accept cash, sir. We're going to need a money order. I don't have time to go to. I'll be there with the cash, 30 minutes. I can't take cash. Are you listening to me, sir? Are you listening to me? I'm listening to you. I can't take cash. I need a money order. I'll be there in 30 minutes, okay? Sir, I have to cut. I have to turn your power off if you're not here. I give everybody 10 minutes. 10 minutes where they can pay it or we can actually turn it off. Now, you tell me what you want me to do. I'm going to call my wife real quick, all right? Real quick. Sir, I don't have time to call you. I don't I don't have time for that. First of all, sir, you, you, I'll get me upset. My wife don't mess up bills, okay? First of all, okay? Okay, if she doesn't mess up bills, then what the hell is going on? I don't know. I'm going to call her real quick and we'll get this straight, okay? Okay, well, sir, I don't have real quick time. What we have to do right now is I have to do this. I have to either turn your power off, you get it turned on. Now, listen, you, I can come back and turn this thing right back on next week. It'll be a $150 penalty. But you can't you can't turn reconnect me. First of all, you get, need to get the f out of my yard, first of all. So I call your supervisor. Sir, I'm here because I'm supposed to be here. I'm here because you haven't paid your bill. I'm going to call my wife and look at this straight right now. I'm here because you haven't paid your bill. I paid my bill. My wife paid my bill. Well, how do you know she paid it? Because you don't know a damn thing. You don't know anything. Who are, hold up. Sir, trust me. My wife paid the bill. It's a mistake in your system. Get out of my yard now. Are you at... Avenue. Yeah, that's correct. But what, I'm in. I'm in. The, then I'm in the right place, sir. And you haven't paid your bill, and I've been ordered to turn it off. I tell you what. Tell you what. Tell you what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna be there in 30 minutes. I'm, I'm not gonna be, there. be here. I'm not gonna be here in 30 minutes. Okay? Are you? Are you listening? I'm turning this off in the next five minutes. Do not touch my. A oh, wife paid the bill. Leave my left Your wife it. hasn't paid the bill. Now maybe your wife is out lallygagging doing something else. Whoa, 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 whoa. First of all, you keep her keep her out of this, all right? Okay. You're the one that brought her in. Stop. You're the one that keeps telling listen. me what she has done and what she listen. hasn't done. Listen, listen, keep my hey, that's why I draw the line. I'll be there in thirty minutes. Me and you can talk. I, I'm, I'm not gonna continue to go back and forth with you, sir. I don't have thirty minutes. You got I got me. ten minutes. Look, you understand look. me? I gotta. I'm, I'm gonna leave right now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get the car right now. Okay? I'll be there thirty minutes, sir. I don't have thirty minutes. I'm turning it off. You can call downtown and get uh, headquarters to turn it back on, and we'll come back out here, and it's a reconnect fee for one hundred and fifty dollars. So I gotta come up with three hundred. Oh, hell no. Listen, Sir, listen, your listen. bill is 200 and something dollars, and that's going to be a $150 reconnect fee. That's some What the No, hell no. That's a, hey, I'll be there in 10 minutes. This Okay, well, sir, I, 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 and I've told you before, you have five minutes to get here. No, I, listen, listen.
Listen, listen. Let me call my neighbor real quick. Hold on. Let me call. Let me, hold up. Let me call. I don't have time for you to click over and call other people, sir. Is there somebody that can give me a money order right now? Yeah, yeah. Right now, I can get you a money order in, in five minutes. Okay. Now, who's going to do that? I don't know. I call my wife. I told you, your wife is the reason why you're in this situation. I'm going to report you to your supervisor. How are you going to report me when I'm out doing my job? You should report your wife for not doing what she's supposed oh, to be doing. Hey, bro, listen, listen. I don't listen. care what you say. If Do you want your lights on or off when you get here? I want my lights on. What the f*** do you have lights on? Your lights are getting turned off in the next two minutes because your wife didn't pay the damn bill. I'll tell you Excuse me? I'll tell you Listen, keep my wife's name out your mouth. Hey, 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 I, I, I tell you what, you know what my supervisor would tell you? I don't give a f what your supervisor going to tell he me. He would tell you that you have been talking to nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked. <laughs> oh, that's some <laughs> up, man. I was, hey. oh, I was on my way to... Your co-worker got you, Joseph. He got you. I'm going to get his... <laughs> Man, don't do that <laughs> no more, man. Man, you had me. <laughs> hey, I got one more thing to ask you, man. What is the baddest radio show in the land? Come on, man. Steve Harvey Morning Show. <laughs> With nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Ooh. Come on. He did a Will uh, Smith. Keep my wife's name out your mouth. That's what he said. He did say that. I didn't get slapped, though. I ain't get slapped though. No. You know, no. A little different. We, I was slapped the Independence Day out of Wheel if he called himself <laughs> right now, bro. I'm, just, I'm sorry. I got carried away. <laughs> <laughs> and there it is. There you have it. Let me thank uh, Charlotte, North Carolina again for coming out, hanging out with your boy at five shows. Sold out in Charlotte, North Carolina. I thank you. I thank y'all. Thank you. Did I do it? <laughs> yes, I did. Did I do it, Charlotte? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Ignorance at its best, wasn't it? Thank you so kindly. All right. See you next time. What's laying on my? What's on my list next? Uh, Not what's on your list? Where you going? Yeah. You know, I have a list. I I, I got to go to work. Uh, Ready to love is back in stride again. I know when it is. Columbia, South Carolina, July 1st, Township Auditorium. That's exactly when it is. Friday, July 1st, Township Auditorium, Columbia, South Carolina. Until then, I will lay dormant with my stupid, and then I'll rise again. Stupid at its best. Ooh. Dormant. Yeah. We dormant. <laughs> it lay dormant. <laughs> yes. I. Mm. <laughs> I, I can lay, I can quiet my stupid. I can do that. Yeah, that's a whole two level there. <laughs> put some, yeah, put some hush, on, put some live. hush on my stupid man. Yes, sir. That's hey. good. How was Queen Let City? You said you acted a fool, huh? It she was showed good. You love. Queen City was good. Show me mad love. Came out to see your boy, mm -hmm. and uh, I gave it to him, man. I gave it all to him. Queen City. I mean, yes. I like Charlotte. Standing ovations in them shows. That nephew was cold. Y'all got to come see him. That nephew was cold. Oh. T.I., come hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> I give you ten minutes. In, I give you ten minutes in these comedy clubs, baby. Show you some. I, I can show you something. Come on. All right, nephew. Coming up next, it is the Strawberry Letter. The subject is, what's the rush? What? The Rush. We'll get into that right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And if you need advice on relationships, dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. We could be reading your letter live on the air, just like we're going to read this one right here, right now. It could be yours. You never know. You never know. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it by you. Here it is. Strawberry letter. Subject, what's the rush? Dear Stephen Shirley, 
I've been with the same man for 11 years, and he asked me to marry him four years ago. Now, all of a sudden, he wants to set a wedding date, but I do not want to. I met him in college, and I thought we were destined to have a great love story. I was 20, and he was 22, and our chemistry was amazing. When I was 22, I got pregnant, and we moved in together. I got a job while he got his master's degree, and he told me as soon as he finished his degree, he was going to make me his wife. On his graduation night, I got pregnant again. He got a really good job and I started teaching school. I fell in love with my job and raising our children, so I didn't really realize that I was playing house and this man did not plan to marry me. I went to stay with my mother for a while so I could clear my head. He begged me to come back home and he promised that he was about to propose. Years passed by and he didn't. His father overheard us fussing one day and he advised his son to either marry me or let me go. A few weeks later, he asked me to be his wife. That was four years ago and I was ready to do it right then. He kept stalling and asking me, what's the rush? I and move past it. Now I'm for the marriage and I don't want him anymore. I don't even wear my ring and he hasn't noticed. He invited my mother over last weekend to talk about wedding dates and I was checked out of the conversation. When my mother left, I asked him, what's the rush? He hasn't spoken to me in over a week because of my attitude. How can I not be allowed to have an attitude? Should I give the ring back or move on or should I marry an old friend and baby dad that I don't love anymore. Hmm. Please don't do that if that's the truth. I mean, why would you marry someone that you don't love anymore? Um, that makes about as much sense as him walking around for more than a week not talking to you because you said to him, what's the rush? The man is too immature for you, I think. Uh, you, you have to let him, you know, I kind of blame it on you a little bit because you've let him get away with too much stuff in this relationship. He's not kept his word on anything. And, and where does he think you got what's, what's the rush from? You got it from him. He said it to you first. I mean, this is a real red flag and it's a glimpse into what marriage uh, might be like with this man. I mean, this entire letter is about your lives together since you were 20 and 20 two years old. Uh, the main thing you wanted was to marry this man. He kept putting it off because there was no incentive uh, to marry you. You already had the babies early on. You were living together. He had what he wanted right there without the benefit of marriage. And uh, now he sees you've changed. So he's trying to step up. But it's too late. You're over it, you say, at, at least the marriage part. I mean, the sad thing is you guys do have two children, so you have to talk to each other. You got to communicate. I mean, I think this fairy tale you have of this great love story you wanted, I think that's over. Uh, the reality is 11 years later, you're miserable. Uh, you're ready to walk and you're writing us. I say go in peace, knowing that you dodged a bullet from not marrying this guy after all these years. I think you should get your child support and move on. When you do fall in love again with the right man the next time, when he proposes, set a date, start planning immediately, okay? Don't waste time. Steve? I'm gonna, in two and a half minutes, this is what I'm going to do. And then the second half, I'm going to show you how this works. I'm going to show you about 13 questionable statements in this letter. He asked me to marry him four years ago. That's one. Uh, he wants to set a wedding date, but I do not. That's two. Uh, when I was 22, I got pregnant and we moved in together. That's three. I got a job while he got his master's degree and told me as soon as he finished his degree, he was going to make me his wife. That's four. Uh, the fifth statement was, I fell in love with my job and raising our children, so I didn't realize I was playing house, and this man did not plan to marry me. That's five. The next statement was, I tried and wanted to clear my head, so I went to stay with my mama. He begged me to come back, and now he promised that he was going to about to propose. That's six. Years go by, and his father uh, overheard us fussing one day, and he advised his son either marry me or let me go. That's seven. Uh, that was four years ago. A week later, he asked me to be his wife. That's eight. That was four years ago, and I was ready to do it right then. He kept stalling and asking me, what's the rush? That's nine. 
I cried and moved past it. Now I'm over the marriage and I don't want him anymore. That's 10. I don't wear my ring and he hasn't noticed. That's 11. He invited his mother over to uh, my mother over last weekend to discuss wedding dates. I was checked out of the conversation when my mother left. I asked him what was the rush. That's 12. He hasn't no, he hasn't spoken to me in over a week because of my attitude. So how can I not be allowed to have an attitude? Should I give the ring back and move on, or should I marry an old friend and baby daddy that I don't love anymore? That's thirteen. In a one-page letter, I just read to you thirteen very questionable statements. Do this sound like marriage to you? Not at all. If you don't love somebody, I can promise you marriage is out of the question. Mm. Right. Because you're going to need that more than money. Because mm. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, money don't keep a relationship together. Love can overcome a multitude of sins. But if you ain't in love, it's no way you can get married and stay married. All right, Steve, hang on. We're waiting for part two of your response coming oh, up I at 23 minutes for you after the hour. <laughs> All right. Uh, title of this strawberry letter, What's the Rush? We'll find out more when we come back right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, come on, Steve. Let's recap today's strawberry letter. The subject, What's the Rush? Uh, we just went through this letter about all these reasons that this woman don't need to marry this man. I gave you 13 questionable statements. They, they At the end of the letter, this lady just said, should I marry an old friend and baby daddy that I don't love anymore? They've been together for 11 years, and he been lying about getting married, stalling, putting it off, making false promises over and over and over and over This man, you realized after you had two children and found a school teaching job you love, that this man was just playing house and did not pretend. He didn't even want to get married because I've told you all ladies about this. The wedding day may be the day of your dream, but the man does not have a wedding day as the day of his dream. We only dream of the chick of our dream. And if we can get you without the day, what's the rush? And he just proved what I've been saying for years. So he has you, what's the rush? Ladies, this is what I want to do. Carla, Shirley, let me have your undivided attention, please. We're going to do a reenactment. I am going to be Mr. What's the Rush. I don't care what you ask me. I'm going to find a way not to get married. You can make it sound as wonderful as you like. Just make a statement, and I am the person that don't want to get married, and I will give you reasons why we can't get married. You don't have to worry about this letter, Shirley and Carla. You can ask me anything you want, any happy remark about a wedding day, about what your plans are. You can do anything, and I'll just tell you why we can't do it. Ready, set, here it is. Honey, I just got my wedding dress. I'm so excited. Oh, man, that's real nice, man. Wedding dresses, they so nice, you know. But, you know, spending all that money, for what? You know what I mean? A dress. You ain't got no dresses? <laughs> what? Guess what? My friend is getting married, and I just got her save the date in the mail, the invitation to save the date. Oh, I'm so excited. Man, can't that's wait to cool. go to her wedding. That's cool. I can't wait to go to her wedding either. Yeah. Save that date. So, what, yes. what, what, yeah, yeah, let's save that date. Uh-huh. That's beautiful, man. That's good. I'm with that, man. So Ooh, mark this so down, happy baby. For this. Mark, mark this date yeah. down. Yeah, December I got it down. December 16th. Yeah, it's down. it down. Got it. December 16th. Special right. day. Right before okay. Christmas. Yeah. When are we going to go shopping? And get, what are we going to wear all that? Oh, we can wear all that, baby. What, baby, 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 what you want to wear? <laughs> what you want to wear? Are you wear anything you want to except a wedding dress. You know, you can wear anything you want to. <laughs> honey, just, honey, you better not I'm have pregnant on the again. Dress, yeah. huh? I'm pregnant again. May as well make an honest me. You pregnant again, might as well make a what? Uh, an honest woman out of me. Marry me. Baby, time. baby, mm-hmm. one of the main characteristics that I love about you is your honesty. I don't, uh-huh. you know, you've been honest with me the whole time. With how you are, that's the beautiful thing. But you're already an honest person, baby. You need all that to prove to somebody you're an honest woman. 
You know, you already, already had the baby. You done done all the tricky stuff anyway. Ain't nobody fit to believe you honest know how. You know, you know, you done set up here and done all this here. Now you want somebody to believe you honest. You know, like you honest what? You know, we done done the do now. You know, baby coming. Oh. Everybody know you wasn't all that honest. Ain't you know, you know, you know, you know. But, you know. but let's seal the deal. Let's seal, seal the deal. The deal. Mm-hmm. See now that right there. See that sound like stealing. You don't, you don't be talking to, talking to the Lord about what? stuff like that. You know, we're going to seal the deal. That's, what I, that's why I love the church I go to, you know, because they try to keep us sin free. You know, now, we done already been in sin, been, man, you know, have come, you know, wow. you know, kibotulating and all this before marriage. Now, all of a sudden, you know, you want to go seal the deal. You know, just like go to hell. You know, it don't make no sense, Carla. All right. So we've been talking all this stuff about wedding. When are we going to set our date? Because I have some dates in mind. So do you want a summer wedding, Christmas, winter wedding? Yeah, I was thinking more like a leap year wedding. A leap year? I love it. I love it. You don't want to wait that long, a leap year wedding? But but see, that'd be good then, you know, could it, 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 you know, give us time to plan and everything like that. So that's the date I'm looking for the next time we have leap year. Oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Well, honey, I, I talked to uh, the pastor, mm-hmm. and he said he's ready. Uh, all we have to do is get back with him and let him know when we're ready. So he's he's set to officiate our mm-hmm. ceremony, and um, I, I'm just so excited. You know how much well, we love uh, our pastor. That's all good, but uh, I just changed mm-hmm. churches last week. <laughs> We don't even yeah. go there no more. Yeah, so we don't even go there no more. We that ain't even my pastor no more. So we got to lie. We got to get on this new pastor's list. Go ahead, Carl. We got to start over. Yeah, we got to start this process over, baby. We don't even go there no more. Go ahead. You want to go to Vegas? We can just go to Vegas and get. Married. Hell yeah, I want to go to Vegas, man. Woo. Okay, let's go to but, Vegas. But and get you know married. what they say? What, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. So ain't no need us trying to come back with no happy ass news. <laughs> <laughs> honey, Damn. honey, uh-huh. honey, I'm so happy. Dad was ill. You know, he was sick, but he's better now. And he said he will Who walk is? me down the aisle. He's ready. Yeah, Who? he's going to walk me down. My Who? dad. My dad. Our dad. Oh. Your father-in-law. Baby, yeah. your sick ass daddy? No. <laughs> he's no longer sick. He's well. Oh, you think I'm going to be standing up there and watch something happen to him on his way down the aisle? <laughs> You we think gotta he's just go. gonna fall out? No, I ain't finna do that. To your dad. Sports talk with Junior. Your dad ain't in no right shape. Walk down no damn aisle. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys, it is time now for Junior and Sports Talk. What you got, Junior? Okay, Shirley. Well, it is. Uh, Scotty Scheffler won the Masters. He's only 25 years old. Congratulations to Scheffler. Uh, it was a uh, yeah. Bye, bye. yeah. Did you watch that? Yeah, that, that, yeah. Did you see yeah, Rory McIlroy? On the boy, 18th, that boy, man. boy, that boy man. made it. He was trying to get him. <laughs> he was, man. That was a great finish, man. Tiger did finish uh, plus 13 over at the Masters. It's the second worst performance of his career. But the fact that he's able to play in the Masters at 14 months after his car accident is a great story. So Tiger's back. He says he's going to play in the U.S. Open. NBA news. Joel Embiid wins the scoring title. And he's also favored to win the MVP. Mm. And, yeah, man. And then... The Lakers coach, Frank Vogel, out as the Lakers head coach. That's what sources say. But Frank Vogel said, as of Monday, he has not heard from the Lakers. Well, they just telling you now, your ass ain't going to be there next season. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care you know, what you ain't heard. They said that you ain't not going to be the head coach. I ain't he heard nothing. He said he ain't heard nothing? Yeah, he ain't heard nothing. Well, how come I heard it? <laughs> <laughs> how come I know? And you in the office. <laughs> <laughs> also, the NBA play-in tournament is coming up, man, tonight. Uh, the play-in tournament is the seed 7 through 10. Uh, 7 plays 8. The winner out of that will get the 7 seed. 9 plays 10. And they'll play the winner of that game will play the loser of the first game. So, here it is in the East. Brooklyn and uh-huh. Cleveland. 7 and 8. Cleveland, the Cavaliers, plan to go to the playoffs. And then you have Atlanta and Charlotte playing for the 8th seed. Uh, also in the West, it is Minnesota and the Clippers, and we have New Orleans and San Francisco. First seeds are Miami and Phoenix. Who 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 we looking like? I really want Chris Paul to get a ring, man. Chris Paul. Who's San Francisco. San Francisco. Oh, Oakland, Golden San, State. Golden, I'm, Golden State. Yeah, I mean, uh, not San Francisco, San Antonio. Excuse me. Oh, 
Oh, oh, I'm telling you. Oh, you. I'm, I'm San Francisco, yeah, but I'm like sitting there going. The 49ers <laughs> play basketball, man. <laughs> I'm, in, I'm, in, I'm in San Antonio and New Orleans. <laughs> uh, oh, Miami yeah. and Phoenix are the number one seeds. Uncle, do you feel? I, I, I really root for Chris Paul and the Phoenix Suns to get this man. I, I, hey, man, I ain't heard y'all mention Houston. For what? It's over. We've been out since. We have been out since October. Oh, y'all out with the Lakers. <laughs> yeah, we've been out. We we, we, <laughs> we we lost the first ten games of the season. No hell well. We weren't finna get the don't, playoffs. Don't 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 do it with him, Junior. Don't do it with him. Yeah. Don't, don't go no, back and just check, you know, like, you know, know. Back and doesn't he? I mean, every I mean, yeah. man, we we is doing sports. Yeah, well, we we uh, <laughs> well, you know, you know, congratulations. Whether you Cleveland. can play it or not, that's really not. <laughs> None of my damn business. <laughs> yeah, well, congratulations, Cleveland. Y'all in. So, you know, we'll see what y'all do tonight, man, against Brooklyn. Hopefully, you know, y'all be out. Then we all be out. That's, that's how I look at it. Sure. Thank you. Coming up at the top of the hour, yesterday was National 8-Track Day, Steve. And, uh, Steve, uh-huh. you going to school us on music from back in the day right after this. Hell yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so Steve, yesterday was National 8-Track Tape Day. So two things. First, we want to explain uh, what what 8-Tracks are, okay, to this new generation. And second, we all love Bruno Mars and Anderson Pack, Silk Sonic. Their sound is music back in the day, and Silk Sonic's new single is Love's Train, a remake from Confunction. So here's a little bit, Steve. Number can't sleep too hot for me. <laughs> ah, hold back, baby. Can't sleep too weak. Need to call me up. If I chance. Dial that number. <laughs> Ain't nobody. Come on. And if I did, you ain't singing hard enough, Bruno. <laughs> let him have it, Dave. Let him have it. Let, let him have it. Fade it down. <laughs> and if I did, I can come over. I'm begging you now. <laughs> yeah, uh, what y'all don't know is that's that's confunction. Yes, mm-hmm. Michael Cooper. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Bruno and them doing it good, but they, well, they ain't singing hard enough. <laughs> you, know, you got you got you got to sing that song like it's fitting the tap, like something fitting the tap. <laughs> you know, from the gut, you gotta go. Yeah, from that's, you gotta come up. You gotta come up. You gotta, it's gotta be guttural. <laughs> guttural. <laughs> you know, I appreciate Bruno and uh, Anderson Pack because they they keeping it real. They the best thing in music right now. What's your question though, Shirley? What's an example of guttural? Guttural. You guttural said it has to be uh, guttural. Yeah. Just give like, us an uh, example. Let me let me let, let me think. Like, uh, it's so many. Oh. It means singing from your gut, but see, yeah. say, like this is how a song starts. You gave you all and all to him. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. He wasn't true. He tried to find another girl. Here we go. Sweeter than you. Right. <laughs> it got guttural. That's guttural. It got you just guttural. Went he got tired of the little soft punk ass singing. And it's time <laughs> to just get down into what we in here for. Our songs have pain wrapped up in it. And damn it, we need to sound like it's pain. <laughs> Next question. Okay. Yeah, we'll explain eight tracks. To, a to track look like mm-hmm. I'll give you an example. Mm-hmm. Have you ever seen a paperback book? Yeah. Yeah. Take a uh-huh. paperback book, cut it in half. That's an eight track. <laughs> what? Now, <laughs> a track about that thick look like a paperback. 
It's about that thick as a paperback cut in half. Now, uh-huh. on here, it has songs. But on an eight track, it has channels. Four channels on an eight track. So in the middle of your song, it's got to switch channels. And you're going to hear the click at a certain part of the song. Too damn bad, you don't get to pick where the click is. It click over, and it, but it continues. <laughs> it's an eight track. You can only have about 16 of them in your car at a time. That's it. <laughs> That's the max. <laughs> or, else, or else somebody can't ride. <laughs> 16 at a time or somebody else can't ride. You get a four pack or eight pack and somebody can ride. Once you get a 32 container, somebody can't ride. It take up a whole seat. All right. That's how we All carried right, music you. with us back then. Back thank thank God you. the cassettes Lesson. came along. Uh-huh. We'll have more of the Steve Harvey Morning Show coming up at 20 minutes after, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, so this Sunday we know is Easter Sunday, and um, a lot of people get, you know, a lot of kids get Easter baskets. So here's the question. If you were to receive an adult Easter basket, what would you want in it? What would you want in yours, Steve? You asking me now or when I was single? (laughs) I think when you were single would be more interesting, so let's go with that. (laughs) Yeah, the Easter bunny would actually be a girl. (laughs) <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, the Easter Bunny would uh, have uh. been a girl. Yeah, Jessica Rabbit in female form, but in live. Oh Lord, yeah, yeah that'd have been my Easter basket. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like that. Okay, all right. What about your Neff? Halle Berry, right in that basket. <laughs> right in Halle that Berry. basket. Yes, Lord. <laughs> Back when you were single or now? Yeah, back when when I was single. Back when I was single. Okay, of course. Thank Mm. you. Just thought I'd help you out. All right, come on, Junior. What you got? Easter dinner. Just you want to eat some ham? Yeah, (laughs) I got to eat. You know, holidays be hard when you're single. You got to figure out where you're going to eat at. I'm tired of going to people's houses on Easter. I need dinner here in my basket. That's what I need. (laughs) 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 Got to beg your way over to somebody's house. That's difficult work to do. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Thank you, guys. Coming up in 33 minutes after the hour, we'll play a round of Would You Rather right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Time for another round of Would You Rather Steve. Yes. Would you rather be a star player on a losing basketball team or would you ride the bench on a winning basketball team? Which one? I might as well get on that bench of that winning team because if I'm out there, we ain't going to win. <laughs> 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 Nephew. You star yeah, I'm on the bench. Mm. Okay, yeah, Junior, I know you want to be a star player. What oh, about absolutely. you? absolutely. I love to talk mm-hmm. trash to the team. We lose. Here I go again tonight. I guess I got to carry us again, huh? <laughs> <laughs> you love we, it, huh, Junior? Yeah, I love it. I be at that time. Coach, we know who ain't going to show up. You're going to get your little ass whipped. You're going to be in the middle of another place. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Would you rather eat the oldest thing in the office fridge or clean the office bathroom? Ew. Uh, I ain't cleaning that damn bathroom, man. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm finna get fired. Yeah, that's what we So you're not doing either? You're not I, doing I, A I, or B? I promise you I'm not cleaning that damn bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> I don't clean my own, so I don't know the damn well. We ain't going to here with no damn... Right. No damn... Uh, that little brush with that little tidy bowl and that sponge yeah. and some rubber gloves. We not yeah. finna do that, though. I don't give a damn. I'm fired. <laughs> I finally lost my job. And I don't want nothing in that damn refrigerator. I'm out of work, man. I didn't quit. That's fine. That's perfect. Uh, we, clearly, I, I might I might open up that refrigerator and eat something and tell you I ate the oldest thing. And just eat something out of Miss Geraldine's lunch because Miss Geraldine could cook her ass off. So I eat Miss Geraldine food. Not Miss Geraldine. But, yeah, but I'm not going in that damn bathroom. <laughs> Oh, there's no disinfectant. Well, I ain't finna go in here with no spray. Nothing. You're not Ew. finna see me cleaning the toilet. Uh-uh. Yeah. All right. 
All right, so Steve, we know you don't clean. We know you have people to clean, but just for fun, would you rather do the dishes or do the laundry? Oh, I got a way better chance of getting them dishes right. <laughs> There'll be a lot of pink clothes. You, ain't gonna you don't know wet. how to wash yeah. clothes? Uh-uh. Oh, uh, hell no. I know good hell. Well, I don't know how to wash no clothes. I don't even know how to use the uh, the machine. At the, I don't even know what to do. I don't. I don't even. Know, I don't know where to do. You ain't wash the load, though. If you can wash read, a load, you can read. yeah, a yeah. load. You can read. Yeah. Now, when the last That's time I washed a load of clothes? <laughs> oh, did you? Did you? Who? Yeah. He did, did you? Boy, I ain't That's washed a, a load thing. of clothes. I, I know nice. at least. Uh, how long? You go. You gonna have to go back. It was. It was before the Kings of Comedy. In oh the nineties. Mm -hmm. All right, coming up, it is our last break of the day. (laughs) And at 49 minutes after, we'll have uh, some closing remarks from the one and only Steve Harvey right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. It is our last break of the day. Yes, it is our last break of the day on this Tuesday. It's been a good day. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Yeah. good Tuesday. It's been a good day, yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's over so fast, yeah. Um, but um, yeah, it's time now for Steve to leave us with some uh, clothes. Hey, uh, you know something? Um, I really, um, you know, it's sort of interesting, man, how you discover great things about people after they're gone. Have you ever noticed that sometimes? Because I think then people go finding tapes and reels of stuff people said. But I was... Uh, Scrolling through uh, social media, and I ran across uh, Stephen A. Smith interviewing Kobe Bryant one time. And uh, I think it was right after the uh, incident with the girl at the hotel in Denver. I think it was that incident right there, which uh, I felt all along for the thing. I thought it was like some crazy bogus charges. To me, it was uh, because of the way it went down, you know. Uh, But anyway... I was watching this uh, thing on the on the Instagram, and I'm gonna play it for you off my phone. It was the most compelling thing that I've ever heard Kobe Bryant say, and uh, I just want to uh, play it for you. And it was just uh, it was just so interesting, man, about his opinion of God because I'd never heard Kobe Bryant speak about God in any capacity. And so I want to uh, play it for you right now. God is great. Is it that simple? God is great. Don't get no simpler than that, bro. Did you know that? I mean, I'm, I'm, everybody knows that, but the way you know it now, did you know it before that incident took place? You can know it all you want, but until you got to pick up that cross that you can't carry, and he picks it up for you and carries you and the cross, then you know it. That was so compelling when I heard Kobe Bryant talk. He was talking about God is great. And then Stephen A. Smith said, well, did you know that before? He Then he said, well, everybody, Stephen A. said, everybody knows it. Well, everybody don't know it. <laughs> but a lot of people have come to the realization. He said, and Kobe Bryant says, when you have to pick up that cross that you can't carry, and he picks up that cross for you, and you too, and carries both of you, that's when you know how good God is, how great he is. Because it's so it's so sad for us as people, myself included, where we discover the most about God in times of need. And some of us, myself included, have not had a relationship with God until something goes wrong. And then when it go wrong and you have no answers, then all of a sudden I'm calling on him. Oh, Father God, help me. I ain't talking to y'all. I'm talking to myself. I've been guilty of this myself. That's how I know what I'm talking about. And what I have found out, it is far better for me to have a relationship with God when things are going okay and just fine than to wait on something to happen, then I have to call on him. I'm telling you, man, my mama used to say something that I didn't get a long time ago. She said, I call on Jesus every day. I don't want to wait till something happens and I got to call him and introduce myself. 
That was a compelling statement my mom used to make. She said, I would hate for something to happen to me, and then I have to call him and introduce myself. I want him to already know me. Y'all, I'm telling you, man, it's one of the greatest moves you can make is to form a relationship with your creator. Now, I don't care what you call him. You can call him Jehovah. That's absolutely fine and perfect. You can call him Yahweh. You can call him Allah. Uh, it's, it's beautiful. I'm telling you, but you got to call him. And you've got to form a relationship with your maker. Uh, Kirk Franklin had a book out one time, and I read this thing about it. He said um, he was giving this analogy of when your car breaks down. When your car breaks down, if you reach in the glove compartment, there's an owner's manual in there. And that owner's manual is put in there by the maker of the car. If you're driving a Ford, the book that you open up is from the Ford manufacturer to tell you how to troubleshoot the problem you're having with the Ford. If you are a Toyota, when you open up the glove compartment, the manual that's in the glove compartment is made by the people who manufacture Toyotas. He said that's how you troubleshoot a car. You refer back to the manual that was designed by the creator of the vehicle. So when I get in trouble as a Christian, I can troubleshoot my life by the manual that was put together by my creator, which is a Bible. But if you're a Muslim and your creator is Allah, it's a Quran. Do you understand? It's still how you troubleshoot your life. But who am I to tell the other person that they make it ain't right for them? It's only one God. It's whatever you call him. You can call him whatever you want to. But I'm telling you right now, you need to have a relationship with God so you can troubleshoot your life. That's my closing remarks today. If you don't like that one, see you tomorrow. <laughs> have a great day. Talk to God. He'd love to hear from you. That's a fact, too. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 